time to introduce Dr. Michael Johnson from the New Zealand Initiative, and he joins us now. Uh, Dr. Johnson, welcome to the show. Lovely to have you on again. Good morning. Nice to be here. Um, the Ministry of Education are saying, uh, listen, um, sadly, we haven't gone up or arrested the decline. We let a skewed sample of students sit the last test for reading, maths and science, which is why our PISA test scores aren't so bad. Does that surprise you? Uh, pro probably not. I mean, to be fair to the ministry, it, 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 it's not compulsory for either schools to participate or, or students to sit. And uh, a lot of schools opted out who might normally have done it, and that probably has to do with uh, general... Uh, chaos and malaise in the school system, possibly following COVID disruption and, and so on. So I'm not terribly surprised that more schools than usual opted out and, and more students that, than usual did too. So I think that's what's created the skew. But uh, it is good to see the ministry fronting up with the the, 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 the right information here. Well, that's um, probably because the OECD pushed back and went, oh, your, your grades are a bit better. What have you done right? And the OEC, to probably yeah. do, then the Ministry of Education had to explain, oh, well, nothing really. We just gave you a skewed well, sample. Well, well, yeah, I mean, certainly there's no reason to think that things would have improved because we haven't changed what we do yet. Uh, hopefully we will now. The, uh, the incoming government has promised to do something about primary school literacy and, and move to a structured literacy approach that uh, will involve retraining a lot of teachers and um, hopefully making sure that new teachers are trained to, to use more effective approaches. So I think we can look forward to an improvement, but I've got no reason to think that we should see it yet. Um, the amazing thing, though, is that um, according to P well, according to the Ministry of Education, um, they invite schools and they invite students to sit these PISA tests, um, and they have done for obviously decades now. Um, and yeah, since, since 2000, yeah. Since 2000, yeah. So, um, and the 85% of invited schools usually take part, and this, and 80% of invited students. Are you aware, Michael, of what the scope is for invitation, or do they just pick a representative sample? They pick a representative sample, so they'll, they'll make sure that the profile of schools that are asked to take part reflects the overall profile of New Zealand schools. And I, and I have to say, within the ministry, the, the crew that do the PISA stuff are, are very good. They're, they're, they're good statisticians, they're good measurement people, and, and they know what they're doing. So uh, while I've had many critical things to say about the ministry as a whole, I, I would speak highly of the, the people that do the PISA stuff. Oh, that's fair enough too, because I mean, they are reporting also, and, the, and uh, they're obviously declining I mean, nobody wants to be involved in a declining trend. But the thing that really no. strikes me about the PISA, so obviously, you know, they are telling the truth. Um, but the thing that strikes me about the PISA test scores since, as you say, 2000, and their uh, gradual decline, and, and a sort of ongoing decline, has yep. the Ministry of Education never asked itself why? Well, that, that's a really good question. I, I mean, they've, they've certainly been told why by people like James Chapman, Professor James Chapman, uh, now Emeritus Professor at Massey University, who's spent decades researching reading and uh, knows the, the literature well and has advised them a long time ago to, to give up on reading recovery, which is a failed approach, uh, and to adopt the science of reading as a basis for teaching literacy in our schools. So uh, it's not as if they haven't had experts telling them <laughs> how to improve. Yes, but I mean, surely if I was working for the Ministry of Education, I'm the Secretary of Education, or I'm a senior policymaker, one of the lizard people, and I'm sitting there going, hmm, and there's, there's thousands more of us than there used to be. Uh, we've grown like topsy over the last six years. Wouldn't one of the first things that I'd be wanting to do is improve the reading and writing and science standards of the pupils that I'm responsible for? Well, one might have hoped so, yes. Uh, and it is curious, isn't it? I mean, I think the ministry's grown by about 30% since, since 2017. Uh, and we really have nothing to show for it in terms of improvement in education. There's been uh, an NCEA review for most of that time and, and only just 
now are we getting to implementing it? Uh, similarly, the curriculum refresh has been ongoing for several years. So it's hard to know what all, all those people are doing. No, it is. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here. I've got children. Um, one's left school last year, year 13. I've got a year 12 this year. I've got a year 10 as well. But I, I'm struggling to see any um, thing coming through the schools, uh, and they go to two different schools, but I'm struggling to see yep. anything coming through the schools which would suggest that um, the ministry have got a handle on improving the standards of anything. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think it, it will be a challenge for the incoming Minister of Education to uh, enact reforms through a bureaucracy like that. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that's handled. Well, and that's the other issue. Michael, I mean, I'm I'm intrigued by. Um, I've talked about the lizard people. I've been pejorative of that this morning, but I've talked about how ministries can and departments sabotage, particularly centre right governments who want to do things like testing or advise parents about how their children are doing at school through objective and independent assessment. Um, we've had those taken away over the last six years. Um, we've had all the public information about schools on the Education Counts website, for example, uh, eventually stripped away as well. Um, do you expect Erica Stanford, one presumes she'll be the Minister of Education this time next week, to have to fight uh, 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 with the Ministry around the agenda that she wants to implement? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, I, I wouldn't like to say that there's been active sabotage. I, I do think there's a lot of bureaucratic inertia and a lot of churn. Uh, and that that will be something that the incoming minister will be aware of and uh, hopefully will have strategies to deal with. It, it certainly isn't easy because, of course, ministers rely on the, the public service to do the will of the government that has been elected by the people of New Zealand. And uh, that's the duty of the, the public service. So if it's not doing that in an efficient way, then perhaps they need to look at a, a much more general reform of the public service. You've looked in education for a long time now. These PISA rankings, um, a lot of countries look at them, obviously. We're not the only one that's declining. I think Australia uh, next door is declining as well, not quite as precipitously, but still, nevertheless. The countries yep. that are at top of that PISA rankings, do we ever look at them objectively and go, why? Yes, I, I mean, that is one thing that we do. I, to be honest, I'm always a little bit wary of international comparisons because it's hard to compare countries with very different cultures. So if you look at East Asia, for example, they, they do well, Singapore, Hong Kong, the, the eastern cities in China. Also, Northern Europe tend to do well, the Scandinavian countries, Finland. Uh, and there are certainly some clues that we can garner from uh, their systems, especially I think the Northern European ones, they they train their teachers for longer, they have uh, a high regard for teachers. Now that's where the cultural factors come in to an extent and w when you've got a populace who see teachers, uh, the teaching profession on par with being a lawyer or a doctor, you've got a, a, a much greater cultural respect for education and, and for educators than perhaps we do in New Zealand. And so really I think we need to be looking to enhance the status of the teaching profession and that needs to be done not just by persuading people to respect teachers more but, but actually by training teachers better so that they win the respect of parents uh, through through the way in which they educate young people. And I, I, I don't ever want to dump on teachers. I, I think, by and large, they're extremely hardworking. They operate in conditions of extreme stress at the moment. Uh, and really, they've been let down by their training a lot of the time. And that, that's, the, that's where I think we really need to target uh, efforts to improve. 